Hi guys, this is John from Meet Your Sticks University, and this is Dry Aging 102, Basics of Dry Aging Steak. Now, if you're planning on doing this at home, the first thing you need to do is find out if the meat you're buying has already been aged so we can make sure that you're not gonna overage it. Then you need to decide how long you're going to age it. Now, 21 to 28 days is a good range for the first time you experiment with this, and then you can kind of go up or down from there. Now, you need to keep the beef at a consistently low temperature, so your fridge is probably your best bet. Couple issues with that though, and one of them is that the meat is gonna take on the flavor of whatever else is in your fridge, so be mindful of that. Also, the ideal humidity is 75 to 80%, and there aren't many fridges that are gonna give you that option. You also need to keep the air moving in there. A possible fix for this would be to put a small computer fan in a corner of the fridge to keep the air moving. Now, I'd put my meat on something like a jerky wrap, with coarse salt underneath it. That's gonna absorb any off odors or flavors and try to keep the fridge as closed as much as possible to prevent temperature fluctuations. Now, how long you wanna age it is gonna depend on a few things. First, how much of your meat are you willing to lose to dehydration and surface mold? That's generally the biggest one. Now, as the meat sits in the open air, a few things are happening. Some of them can be seen, some of them can't be seen. The biggest and most obvious is the effect of dehydration on the meat. The 75 to 80% humidity is designed to control this and prevent what we would call case hardening in sausage. This is where the outside of the meat either dries or cooks too quickly, and it can no longer effectively pass heat into the meat. And in this case, it'd be let water out of the meat. If we put it in a box with no humidity control, the outermost sections of the meat are gonna dehydrate too quickly and we wouldn't get the full benefits of dry aging. Now we've had some subprimals sitting in our dry aging chamber here and the plan was to pull the first batch at 21 days, the second at 42, and then leave the last one in there just as long as we could resist. Well, we got the first batch at almost exactly 21 days and then that went from 13.7 and 13.4 pounds of meat down to 11.4 and 12.6. So that's a 17 and 6% loss. So as you can see, there's a wide range of expected product loss here. Now, as we've said before, in the first 21 days, the tenderness of the meat has been improved as much as it's going to be. Tests have been done by major university labs that, and have proven that beyond 21 days, it does not have any noticeable effect on the tenderness of the meat. What happens after 21 days is all about flavor profile. So we also pulled the batch at closer to 60 days than 42, and this is where we saw some pretty significant jumps in product loss. We went from meat blocks that were 12.1 and 15.7 down to nine and 11, which is a loss of 26 and 30%. Now the trimming was also significantly more different or difficult in this batch. So when you factor in what we had to trim off the meat, we're looking at losses of like 55%. So is the taste change from 21 to 50 something that's worth an extra 40% of loss in product weight? I've tried both of these, as you can see from what's left of them. Uh, the one that we pulled at 21 days is significantly bigger. They were both incredibly flavorful, really, really nice and tender and tasted really similar. I mean, there wasn't that absolutely massive change in flavor that you might expect from 21 to 60 days. Certainly a little bit. The steak we dry aged longer did have a little bit more nuttiness to it, maybe starting to develop that the beginning of a blue cheese flavor, but it was nowhere near enough to justify losing an additional 40% of it. So my recommendation for when you start this out, stay at 21 to 28 days for your first few ones. If you wanna go further, go ahead, try it, but just keep in mind that you're gonna lose an extra 40% of your product. Now, trimming these is a little tricky. There are two ways to do it. You can either cut the subprimal into steaks and then trim it off from that, or take the entire subprimal and trim off any fat that has been discolored or mold that's grown on the meat. 
when you're trimming, you need to get everything. You want a nice dark purple color. You don't want to see any blacks. Certainly don't want to see any greens or blues, browns on uh, fat that should all be trimmed off. Be a little bit aggressive with this. It's better that you lose just a little couple extra percent of your steak than you eat some spoiled meat. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and visit waltonsinc.com and meatjustics.com to find everything about the meat. Thanks for watching. I'm John with waltonsinc.com, and we'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to Walton's YouTube channel to watch more amazing videos, or shop at waltonsinc.com to find everything but the meat. Watch our latest sales and giveaway video by clicking here, or watch another hand-picked video by clicking here.